healthy on a budget. Tips and tricks for family meals that don't skimp on good for you ingredients. And guitar greats, that's right. We're gonna chat live with the Oscar winning director behind the new rock documentary, It Might Get Loud. Plus, just for laughs, comedian Arj Barker stops by again for a visit. Showcase Minnesota starts right now. There we go. Now, now I can work. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful one it is. Indeed, <laughs> welcome to Showcase Minnesota. I'm Rob Hudson. Hi, everybody. I'm Corbin Sides. Did you like that inflection? I'm Rob Hudson. That was excellent. Rob practices Plan. that in front of the mirror every morning <laughs> before do. he goes on Not. in the makeup room. Oh, Rob, makeup, where's makeup? Oh, makeup. no! What? Yeah, I put it on with a trowel. Ah! HD is my enemy. We ran into Pat Evans in there this morning and had a good giggle. He's pretty funny. We... That Cross guy's always laughing. I, he, was, uh, he was behind me on the interstate yesterday on 394. <laughs> I saw him in my rear view, and he was just by himself in his car yucking it up. I thought he, I thought he was laughing Maybe at me. Maybe he was Bluetoothing No, or he said he had something on the radio or something. That was funny. Anyway, what a beautiful morning. What yes. a beautiful morning. I, you know, I, I probably say that a lot. And people are like, ah, whatever, Hudson. You say that all the time. But I got outside about 6 o'clock this morning. It was perfect. It was about 60 degrees out. You know, the rain yesterday just made everything fresh. Mm. It rocked. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Hey, talk about a beautiful morning. We're going to talk to uh, the author of this book, Let It Be, about this beautiful girl, which was her daughter, who passed away from uh, can uh, a brain tumor. But the story is uplifting. The story is encouraging. It's inspirational. Mm -hmm. It's about you and your family and other families. And uh, so we, I, I can't wait to get her out here and chat with you. She, she's done a lot with this. And... Um, and we all have a lot to overcome, and this this will help a lot of people. So yeah, very we're nicely. Talk yeah, to her today. I met her uh, back in the yeah. green room. Uh, my fantasy show today: nothing but comedy and music. <laughs> oh, I thought comedy. maybe it was going to be an all lingerie show or something. I didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> like, what is your fantasy show? <laughs> yes, yes. yes well, if we could work Brett Favre <laughs> into it, hey, then on. it would be your fantasy show. <laughs> come on now, come on, retract your claws. <laughs> You're going to be a huge fan of Farbs in about oh, six fan months. Of Farbs, I fan guarantee, of Farbs. guarantee it. No, we've got Paris Bennett is on the show. <laughs> She's been on here before, yep, but it's yep. been a while. She's got a new record coming out. Uh, the the date has yet to be released. I yeah. think you won't get to the bottom of it. She's probably in the green room saying it's August. <laughs> I think it might be August, but uh, she is one of the grand marshals for tonight's Aquatennial Torchlight Parade. That's the fun. theme of the parade this year is there's no place <laughs> like home. Um, Alan Page is one of the other Grand Marshals, and Ava Bronson. So we've got three Minnesotans that are the Grand Marshals, the trifecta of talent. Also, we've got comedian Arj Barker on the show today, and he is hilarious. He's back hilarious. in town. He's hilarious. He's at Acme. He uh, started the, his stint last night, so... He looked fresh, though. I just saw him, and he didn't look like he was too tired. Well, and we can smell the food here mm -hmm. all over, not only the studio, but the building. There are fajitas cooking in the kitchen, and wait till you... Here are the tips on this, how you can cut your grocery bill significantly I'm by all shopping about smart that. and meal planning. We have an expert who's going to tell us all about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got to move on because we got to talk about working out. Do you hate to work out? No. Well, the people <laughs> from the hit series, So You Think You Can Dance, they want to help us all. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, they've just released God. these two brand new fitness DVDs featuring some of their favorite contestants. There I am. Three, the, uh, four, the tone, one, two. The Tone and Groove and Cardio Funk. Two, the editions teach you some cool five, dance six, routines six, from five, jazz five, to hip hop, one, all two, while helping you burn out I those extra pounds. I bet you did. <laughs> now, if you're the 19th and the 20th callers to the numbers on your screen, you're going to win both DVDs. Just call 651-989-5273 or toll-free 888-546-8811. Please remember, if you've won anything from Showcase in the past 30 days, you're not in eligible I'd be in to win traction if I tried now, any of that stuff. Good luck. Well, you know, just take a certain amount of coordination. <laughs> It They'd be a, backing how, up the meat wagon to my house if I tried anything. Rolling in the middle. <laughs> stuff. Rolling, Let's see you try that. Yeah. Come on. I'm going to wear my bear midriff one day. We need a ratings boost. Yeah. Let's go. Uh -huh. All <laughs> hey, right. In just a moment. Work it out. Out. <laughs> Burn it up. Feel the burn. Keep going. <laughs> in 
just a moment how to eat right and save some cash at the supermarket. But first, a look at a vision of you doing that. Let's look at what's coming up today on Rachel. <laughs> All new, what's your body trying to tell you? This crease on the earlobe has been linked with heart disease. Our doc decodes the warning signs. Then, I've been a food stylist for books, magazines. It looks good enough to eat, but... I use men's hair tonic. Food stylist confessions. Look at that! It's a 30-second turkey, baby! And I'm dishing up a homemade treat that looks great any way you slice it. Watch Rachel Ray every afternoon at 2 here on CARE 11. Now, over to Corbin for more in the show. Thanks, Mr. Rob, up front this morning, saving money on your grocery bill and eating healthy at the same time. Yes, you can do both on a budget. And here with some tasty ideas is Stacy Cloney from Kitchen Works. Hi, nice. Stacy. Uh, Stacy says that we met a very long time ago. Yes. Uh, in another job, in another life, our paths crossed. Uh, and you were working with food even Correct. then, but you have a personal story that led you to this kind of food and this kind of cooking. What happened in your life? Well, I've been in the restaurant industry for some, we'll just go over 20 years. That's good. Okay. And when you work with food and you play with food and you enjoy food, you get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And I stand here today probably looking heavier because I'm on camera, but over 140 pounds lighter by changing, wow. eating all natural or going to more natural foods, many, many, many less packaged in cans, mm -hmm. and then exercising. And the two hand in hand, that's the secret. How long did it take you to lose that weight? I mean, I, I imagine it was slow and steady, which is, or well, maybe in the beginning, it's usually a little faster drop off the cliff, but then you have to keep at it. Well, I've had quite a bit of um, jump starts. Back in 2000 was the start of the journey, and it took about two years to get down the, the bulk of the weight. That is amazing. And then amazing. it crept back up because I thought I didn't have to exercise or always eat right. And then we got back on it. And my husband and I, since January of this year, have been able to lose 70 pounds because it did creep back up a little bit. So do you think this lady knows what she's talking about? And that's what happens. Every statistic will show you right. that it's not the losing of the weight, it's the keeping the weight off. Right. And so you're going to tell us how we can do some good eating and save money too. So tell us what you're going to cook for us today. Well, this is a, you put together. a chicken fajita salad. Smells we're taking, great. and it isn't that I'm anti carbs, but we're taking the carb out for a couple reasons. Um, it saves time. You can make mm -hmm. this quickly, and just about everything here, with the exception of a couple items, could be picked out of your garden right now. Yeah. So that will save you money. Well, because I'm looking at the finished product up there, I'm seeing cheese, I'm seeing sour cream. I mean, this is something that has so much fragrance and aroma. We don't think of this as healthy, as bland, as doing without. Right. And nothing here has anything prepackaged or any extra sodium or any extra chemicals of any kind. And you say that's key. All right. So key. let's talk about the recipe sure. and then we're going to talk I'll about start some to tips. Assemble a little bit. Yep. Okay. You've been cooking the chicken here. The cooking is, uh, the chicken's ready. It looks like you grilled it first. Or I, did, I did. I scored it last night and that's part of the, the process of how I work with the clients that I do is to teach them time-saving tips. So everything was prepped so that when I came here, it would be easy to make this meal. So are you saying if I'm cooking chicken breasts for dinner tonight on the grill, instead of cooking the, the two or three that I should do, I should fill up the grill with my chicken yes. breasts so that I can freeze them? or cut them into pieces, have them for fajitas and things like that? Absolute option. Okay. And what that time that you spend now or the day that you grocery shop and build your menu, when you come back and prep, will save you time all week. Okay. And that's another big tip for saving the money. M most people, when I'm working with them, will say they're saving 30 to 50% because we're buying fresh, we're buying whole foods, but we're not going out to eat as much. Mm -hmm. And the prep work that you do, just like a prep cook would do in the restaurant, mm -hmm. saves you time all week and money. Okay, so we're going to buy fresh, so that we all know that's a little less expensive in general than buying something that's packaged and whatnot. Uh, and so fresh are we whole. Okay. Fresh, not already cut and chopped. Yeah, so and to get the whole you. watermelon, don't get the cut up watermelon. Uh, right. That's a little more expensive. You're paying for that service. So you're putting the peppers and the onions on here. What did yeah. you toss those around in? Um, the peppers are just done with organic butter. Mm -hmm. And it's not a lot of butter, but we get a nice sheen, a caramelized color, and a great aroma and flavor. That's not pretty. And too. butter and olive oil are better for you than any type of margarines because of the way they work, break down in the body. So we should so go with the less, butter just less. Just use less of it. I use in this order. Expeller pressed olive oil, butter, 
And then I do use some coconut oils now for some high temperature cooking. So. Okay, now you've got garnishes here I see yeah. that go that go with it. Um, as you garnish that up, I want to talk a little bit about why we have the big bottle of margaritas here. That What's is my that, that is my secret sauce for whenever I'm going to do chicken or um, shrimp or any okay. type of seafood. I add that with, you'll find this on the recipe, but you can put some cumin, some red pepper flakes. Okay. Uh, no salt or pepper is needed. This tenderizes the chicken. You throw it in a Ziploc bag for about 30 minutes. Put it on the grill. It gives it that nice caramel color that you saw. Okay, all right. And it's a fabulous flavor on, well, again, Well, so far this chicken. sounds delish, and uh, we're not giving up anything. Now, you say that we have to go to the grocery with our week of meals planned? Planned. You it's, shop and why from do we the do, menu. Okay, so we're, are we doing that so we don't spend extra money on impulse items? Correct. And then we're only going on the outside of the store because we're buying what we need for the menu. I would, when my kids were young, there'd be a feature card on the refrigerator. Yes. And their friends would come and say, can I eat over on Thursday? You're having couscous or something unusual. But you shop from that instead of going up and down the aisles and just grabbing what looks good. Then when you come back, you already have your plan. You prep it, get it staged and ready in the refrigerator, and then your meals, instead of opening the refrigerator, what's so for dinner what tonight? What now at 4 o'clock? This is what's tonight because it's planned. It's a lot less stressful, and of course we all know that eating together as families is Absolutely. great for a family, and you're teaching your kids how to cook. Will you marry me? I'm telling you, I want somebody who's going to come and help me do this. I would I love, love to help you plan, <laughs> but I am idea. spoken for. <laughs> I love this idea, and uh, so beautiful. We, you have to present as yes. well, right, to make you it look really good? You eat with your eyes first, and as your studio is telling me this morning, the scent of it, too. Yeah, yeah. I well, there it is. We've got a dash. Do you well, have one more quick I thing I was just to say, just finishing it with a little bit of sour cream, and again, and what could be whole better? sour cream. Okay, whole sour cream. She, You heard it here, folks. All right, well, thank you so much, Stacy. Great job. Lovely to run into you again. Continued success in everything that you're doing. For a copy of today's recipe, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address on your screen, or you can log on to our website, showcaseminnesota.com, and just search under the main dish category. I think I'll be making that one. To find out more about Stacy or Kitchen Works, log on to showcaseminnesota.com and just click on the Wednesday link. And there's more to come this Wednesday morning. Still ahead, a meeting of the minds, rock legend style. We'll check yeah, out the new music Carson. documentary and Might Get Loud. And later, the very witty comedian Arj Barker joins us in studio for a few good laughs. Plus, former she Idol contestant Paris Bennett be for role in tonight's Aquatennial Parade. So stay tuned. Oh, where's the trash can? There's one right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> Hi. Davis Guggenheim, Corbin Seitz. Hi, nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Are you of the Guggenheim family? No. So I'm pretty sure that we're not. Are you from out east? Sa I'm from St. Louis. Oh, no kidding. So you're Midwest. I'm a Western guy, yeah. What?
had this record at home of uh, a guitar that had a lot of sustain on it. And I, and I, and I, I got him to come around and have a listen to it. I said, can you get that? And he went away and came back with this phenomenal thing. Distortion Welcome back, pedal. music fans. Uh, we'll be like kids in a candy store when they see the new rock documentary, It Might Get Loud. The film brings together three guitar greats, Jimmy Page, The Edge, and Jack White, and gives moviegoers a glimpse into the artist's unique styles and sounds. It's directed by Oscar winner Davis Guggenheim, and we're delighted to welcome him to the show this morning to tell us more. Uh, more. Great to have you here, Davis. We were just talking about before we came on about that scene, about how that was my favorite scene. I had no idea that they, we were going to start the segment with that. I was taken back by it, but uh, what a rush to see the looks on the edge of Jack White's face when Jimmy Page stands up and starts hammering out a whole lot of love. Well, that was the first moment. We brought these three guys together in a soundstage, didn't know what they were going to do, or what music they would play, and they started talking, and it was very uncomfortable because they come from three different generations, and out of nowhere, Jimmy reaches back picks up his Les Paul and plays a whole lot of love. And on camera, you see the edge and Jack White. Their faces. They're were... melting into 10-year-old boys. <laughs> yes. you know, and, 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 I, and the crew was like, I was like, do your work. They're all yeah. like, oh my god. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just legendary. Why these three? Why did you choose these three guitarists? I mean, you could go down the list yeah. throughout rock history and yeah. pick just about anybody, but you chose these three. You know, part of me, as I came to Minnesota this morning, I was thinking, you know, Prince could have been in there. I yeah. saw him play last year while I was making the movie, and this guy is as good as any of them. There's so many great guitarists. You know, you think about Eric Clapton, you think about Jeff Beck. Uh, what I wanted was three people from different eras who almost were at odds with each other. Yeah. Um, but you can't make the movie without Jimmy Page. Right. And the fact that we got him, he's never given, he's given maybe two small interviews mm -hmm. in wow. 40 years. Mm -hmm. He's never done a movie like this. That's impressive. And he, and the, but the big thing was, will they open up? Will they share their secrets? And, and will they play? Was... They tell us how they write their songs. Davis, I've never seen a documentary uh, out of any walk of life on any subject yeah, that tears well, the listen, veil away I don't, I don't like idea. this one. Just, and as you just mentioned, so you get to know. Maybe it's because Jimmy Page has never done interviews, yeah. but I learned so much about him. Learned so much about the Edge. Yeah. Learned so much about this guy, Jack White. I mean, yeah. you you really dig deep. Thank you. How did you how did how did you get that access? How did you get that trust? Well, it's kind of what I do. I mean, we did it with Inconvenient Truth, and and the idea was, everyone thought they knew who Al Gore was, mm -hmm. and I want to go in there, and it's a ma matter of gaining people's trust, and pushing them to really open up, because that's what people want. You know, rock stars sort of have this distance, mm -hmm. but I was like, I asked Jack White, I said, will you write a song on camera from beginning to end? Mm -hmm. And he goes, are you sure? I said, well, I'll take all day picks up his pencil, starts writing, and from there to writing the song to recording it and handing me the finished copy, I was like, you get to see someone write a song on camera. Yeah. And you see Edge working on Get On Your Boots, which is the song that they're touring with right now. Right. You see him in the studio working that song and trying to figure out how to make it. As a fan, I want to know how these guys do this. Well, you look at uh, The Edge after watching this, and you realize, and he says it himself, He's really not a great guitar player. Right. He is a master of the effects. Yeah, yeah. You showed he showed you how he made that incredible riff, and it was two notes. Right. So he's playing Elevation, and he's sitting it, there in his studio. Yeah. We're in the in Dublin where and they write. It starts off the wow, 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 wow. You know. And he's like, dung, dung. <laughs> yeah. He goes, "Here's my new riff," and it really is what you realize is the Edge is is a, a different kind of guitar player. He, he, he puts all his creativity through these pedals and through these he uh, looks for machines, sounds. soundscapes, right. and, which is opposite of Jimmy Page, which is he's all virtuoso. Let me ask you about that. You, you brought these guys in from such different genres of the same instrument. How did they get along? What did Jack White think of The Edge or Jimmy Page think of Jack White? Although Jimmy Page and Jack White are a lot alike with That's the right. blues, the blues right. uh, influence. But what, what did they think of The Edge as far as guitar players? I, th I think Edge, The Edge was a mystery to, to Jimmy Page. And, 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 and you know, you remember, you two came up and said, we don't want any of these white boy blues bands. You know, he even says it in the movie. Well, the top of the pops, you know, they were looking at those pop artists and yeah. what was going on in Northern Ireland at the time. But they were a rejection. You two said, we don't want to be bands like Led Zeppelin. So right. play 20-minute guitar solos. We want to be hard. We want to say the truth. And they were in opposition. So and when I, he said he wept when he watched Spinal Tap, right. that was pretty much their, their whole Edge, Edge says, you know, uh, 
And a lot of people laughed at Spinal Tap. We wept yeah. because the by the time they were coming up, these big, long-haired <laughs> rock bands were, were, were a joke to them, you know, right. and they weren't speaking to them. But, you know, I didn't know it was going to happen. Jack White drives up and he says, I don't know what's going to happen. It could be a fist fight. Yeah. And there was this sort of oppositional energy, and it took a while for these guys to get to know each other. Whose idea was the little boy, the mini-me, the mini-Jack White? Jack White had At first I thought it was his son or something, but it was all staged, right? So Jack says, uh, I said, how are we going to tell your story? He says, well, I think I want to teach myself how to play guitar. I'm like, how are you going to do that, Jack? He goes, uh, I'll show you. So the, uh, the, the next day he shows up with a, um, a, a nine-year-old boy dressed exactly like him. I, he goes, this, and I go, hi. He goes, this is Jack White, age nine. <laughs> I still don't know who that boy is. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it worked. It yeah. worked. It totally was Jack White, and uh, you're wondering what is going on. Yeah. Uh, great job. Thank really, you very really. much. Thank you for making it. Oh, my God. You can do another one with Prince and Keith Richards and... You know, <laughs> if I'm lucky, maybe a reality show is in the works with it. Well, thank you. It's September 4th here in Minnesota. You bet. At it the might Lagoon. get loud. Like yeah. you said, opens here in the Twin Cities on Friday, August 28th at the Landmark Lagoon. Center. Oh, my goodness. Are we sure about that? August 28th? I thought it was the 4th. But well, I may August be wrong. 28th. It is the 4th. We have the date wrong. It is the 4th. All cool. right. Still ahead, a load of laughs. Funny guy Arge Barker stops by to chat about his show at Acme. That's next. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like, I definitely like the White Stripes a lot too. Jack White. I think you'll, he's you'll a enjoy great it. performer. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just, I'm doing some shows in town in Acme. Are you in town tonight? No. You can hit the road over. I'm, I'm, I... Yeah. Yep. Right. Nice to meet you. Right, you Good luck too. for that. Okay. So right up there with oh. oh wow, that was quick. That guy got to meet Jimmy Page. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Will that, will that get in the shot? You, you can put it on the table if you want. Last time we do whatever I, I don't want. like doing interviews over there. It's you know, Welcome back to the show. Our next guest is a master of offbeat observations. Comic Arge Barker is best known for his role on HBO's quirky comedy, Flight of the Concords. Arge is in town this week for some shows at Acme. We're happy to welcome back to our show this morning. Hello, Arge. Hey, Good hey, to see nice you again. Nice to see you, too. Yeah, Good to welcome see you back. Again. Welcome back. Yeah, on. Arge almost didn't make it to the set because you were talking to Davis Guggenheim there, and the first thing he said was, he got to meet Jimmy Page. Yeah, I can't believe it because that's like Led Zeppelin's my favorite. Really? And, uh, Did you get to see part of the documentary during the interview? Yeah, I do. I was riveted by what I saw. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see that. Yeah. I was trying to hit him up for some free tickets. He was like, oh, I got to go. I got to catch a plane or whatever. <laughs> well, that's like Look you. Up, man. You just got into town. Uh, you did a show last night. How'd it go at the Acme? Oh, I was pretty, pretty good. It's always a pleasure to play at that club. And people say, oh, you're going to just say, you just say that. But really, Acme is one of the best comedy clubs that I know. Why of is it? Every comedian, and I say this every interview, it's like a broken record. What is it about 
the club and the crowd at Acme that uh, comics love so much? I don't know. Like the club, the club is set up nice. It's very intimate. Has an intimate feel, and the crowds are just they're just nurturing. You know, they want you to, you know, do well, and they're very supportive. You feed and, off that. Yeah, like for the first five minutes, I was just screwing around, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, I had all these jokes ready, but I didn't really want to get right into it. That's so what I, was I love. Like, what's, I was like, what's going on? You know, let's talk. And they were, and they, they were already laughing, and having a good time. And I said, wow, this is going to be fun. When I, I haven't even done jokes yet. And That's what already, I love about interviewing you. Is that, you know, Arch comes in, it's like, what do you want to talk about? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> but well, I know. do want to ask you. Um, you're big here in the states, but you're bigger in Australia. And I went to your website. And dude, you go you go down there for like three, four months at a crack. Yeah, you're well, I mean, down there soon. it's like a you know, it's a fifteen-hour flight, so you might as well <laughs> you might as well get something done. <laughs> Safe for a while. I'm not in a hurry to get back on that plane once I get off. You're it. big down there, though. Well, no, it, it goes pretty well down there. I've been touring there for a, almost a decade. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm playing in theaters and stuff. And sports are big down there. You big sports? Yeah, fan? they love sports. I'm not a huge sports fan, but I I can you know respect the achievements. You know, like Michael Phelps. Just set a world, another world record. He's yeah. amazing, and I was really disappointed the way everyone sort of, kind of came down on him because of that incident. Like maybe he smoked some pot, or maybe he's just like really bad at smoking tobacco, <laughs> too technical. <laughs> and then they come out. And so they, you mean the picture did? <laughs> yeah, the picture, right? But big deal. So what? And then they come down. They say, "Oh, you can't go swimming for three months because you smoke pot." I'm like, "What? Isn't that a little extreme?" I mean, I understand you shouldn't go in the pool 30 minutes after you eat. <laughs> But what kind of munchies did they think it was going to get off that? And then Kellogg's, <laughs> Kellogg's drops his sponsorship. And I'm like, excuse me, Kellogg's, did you think that through? You make cereal, okay? I mean, I mean, who do you think eats cereal, Kellogg's? I, who does eat cereal, Art? I, well, I'm pretty sure it's just children and people that are too wasted to make toast. <laughs> yeah, you, think, you, you think maybe you may be biting the hand that feeds you a little bit, Kellogg's? I think they're a local company too, aren't they? Well, General Mills is. <laughs> yes. I know that because when I was growing up, we used to go to the General Mills. We'd climb the fence and eat the crunch berries right off the vine. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> I did not know they grew on a vine. Yeah. They do. Well, in that, <laughs> no, uh, was that Seattle? Did you grow up in Seattle? Or no, no, area? no. I, I love Seattle, but I grew up in the Bay Area. You did? Okay. Yeah. So you're from Northern California. Yeah, down there, yeah. Uh, case in point, Arch says that he doesn't know sports. I asked you about Brett Favre. Yeah. And you ser- were you being funny? You seriously have never heard of Brett Favre. <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> you think I'm going to come on here on a local <laughs> program here and not say that uh, I've heard of like my, the only the, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play in the NBA <laughs> he uh you know he, he you know he's 15 years he's been playing for the Vikings and now he's gonna he's getting traded to the to the uh, some, uh maybe, I don't know exactly what he's doing but the point is like I respect local heroes I'm not gonna come on here and insult an entire city say I've never heard of Brett Favre, <laughs> Favre. You've Favre. seen obviously you don't I don't know follow sports is. I'm not a big sport no, guy you're not but you, you've never seen something about Mary or you never saw him I seen something about Mary. Do you know it's, who that guy was, the Brett Favre guy? Oh, he's the guy from Night at the Museum. I love that guy. He's always like, oh look, he's always like all stressed out. Okay, flight of the Concords. Change gears. Uh, is that still in production? Are you gonna do another? No, no, season? because we are currently we've done two seasons. Okay. I say we. I mean, I have a small part. Well, oh, you, Dave. I mean, you it's know, good, you're you're like the cult favorite. You know, I'm, I'm 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 an, I'm part of the show. You know, I'm proud to be part of the show. But anyway, they finished season two. And now it's like done, and I'm, and the guys are like, well, we want to go do our thing, and you know we have families, and we want to go right, do other right. projects. I'm like, well, that's real nice for you, oh. but some of us need to eat, you know, and we have to have a a, a job. But we gotta go. <laughs> what? <laughs> we gotta go. I just got here. I know, but people will be able to see you more right. yet. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for coming by. Yeah, again, good really. to see you. It's great to have you on. Arge Barker is performing tonight through Saturday at the Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis. For tickets and showtimes, visit acmecomedycompany.com. Coming up next, striving to support families of very sick children. We're going to hear from the author of Let It Be. Plus, we'll catch up with the very talented Paris Bennett. Plans for the Aquatennial Sticker Out and Showcase.
Yeah. Do you uh, to, to be honest, I'm moving. To be honest, I'm moving down there. Are you house, uh, I'm so, uh, oh, cool. Excellent. I'm as good as a citizen, basically, down there. It's nice to meet you. All right, very yeah. good. Good to meet you, sir. <laughs> In today's Community Corner, the Let It Be Foundation, the organization supports families with children facing life-threatening illnesses. And it was started by a California mother who lost her daughter to cancer back in 2006. Ruth Rosen started the nonprofit in conjunction with her touching memoir, Let It Be, My Daughter's Legacy. And this morning, Ruth is here to tell us more. Hi, Ruth. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. This is a story that needs to be told. It can help so many people. You and your daughter look so much alike. Oh, I, used, I hear that a lot. We what a great it, compliment. We heard it during her journey as well. Uh, I can imagine people saying, is this your sister? <laughs> you look very young, long blonde hair. Um, let's talk about this tough story. Uh, you, tell us about Carla. Uh, Carla was an amazing, normal um, teenager. Um, all-star soccer player, straight-A honor student, uh, rule follower, fun, laughter, lived a simple life, and, uh, and that was my life um, four years, four and a half years ago, stay-at-home mom, and, um, and she started complaining of some headaches. Well, as a teenager, you don't get a little, you don't get too worried. And um, it all began with headaches. She thought she had maybe a sinus infection. Sinus infection. Went into the doctor and it was diagnosed as a brain tumor. Uh, went in for a sinus infection first and because she had told me she, didn't ne she never took her medicine he prescribed, he thought that maybe the sinus infection had worsened. So mm -hmm. he said, let's take a better look at the sinuses. Mm -hmm. So we went on our way and the next day, CAT scan. Routine, you thought all this routine. is just routine? It was all routine, mm -hmm. all routine. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing her there with short hair uh, because she went through a lot of treatment and, and whatnot. But she had this motto, this let it be uh, philosophy. Tell us what that was. Well. Before diagnosis, Carla would always say, let it be and let it go, all the time to me, you know, with the teenager mm -hmm. attitude. And uh, five days before she was diagnosed, um, I found out that let it be was a form of amen. So I came home from church and I said, Carla, all those times you kept telling me, just <laughs> let it be, Mom, let it be. You're saying, amen, Mom, yeah. amen. And, of course, with the eyes rolling backwards, she's like, whatever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, five days later, she was diagnosed. And this became her mantra, really, of how she was going to live. She lived with gusto. She looked forward. She lived in the moment. She did. She never complained. Not once did I hear her complain or say, why me? Now, we've got to get to the foundation because this is important. Um, we saw some pictures of Carla, and you have formed, this brought you to your foundation, the Let It Be Foundation. What does the foundation do for people? We help restore normalcy amongst the family, not just the sick child, but when a child is diagnosed, the entire family goes through this illness. Yes, and so yes. my husband and I um, knew that uh, we couldn't have her back, but what we could do is share what we learned through the journey and make a difference. Now, who are these people we're seeing here? Oh, this is the heart and soul of the foundation. These are some of our junior advisory team members, and it's a group of teenagers, junior high and high school, that come together, apply to the foundation, 
to make a difference in the community, to raise money. Uh, they, what they do, what you see there is uh, a front yard makeover, and uh, we've that's a hospital visit. We went back to the hospital where Carla was diagnosed at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We read to the oncology inpatients and one of Carla's doctor or radiation um, oncologist uh, gave them a special tour and has taken them under the wing. Well, and this shows, I mean, teens uh, can give so much. They have so much uh, empathy, so much energy, and you've put it to great use. Um, it's an incredible story. and. You have, we should say, two fabulous sons, Cole and Brandon. <laughs> One of them is here today in the studio. And uh, we're glad Thank that you, you came from California to tell us the story. Thank you so much for letting story. me share. You bet. Ruth Rosen's book, Let It Be, My Daughter's Legacy, is available in bookstores everywhere. And it inspires you no matter what challenge you're going through in life, divorce, anything. Uh, to find out more about the Let It Be Foundation, check out showcaseminnesota.com and click on the Wednesday link. And it's time now for First Birthdays. First Birthdays is brought to you by Minnesota College Savings Plan and ECFE. And a big happy first birthday to little Sophia Jean Picotti. Sophia likes playing with her big sister, giving hugs and kisses and swinging. Happy birthday, Sophia, and to everyone celebrating a birthday today. I love the hat matching swimsuit. Up next, avoiding cancer one day at a time. Our Heidi Bodine gets some advice on what you can do now to reduce your risk of cancer throughout your life when we return. Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest is an expert in cancer prevention. Dr. Lynn Eldridge says the key to living a long and healthy life is all about the small choices you make every day. Her book, Avoiding Cancer, One Day at a Time, offers valuable tips for every person in any stage of life. And we are happy to welcome Dr. Eldridge here with us on Showcase Minnesota. Thank you so much. And <laughs> Thank you for so having me. So many good tips. What I like about your book is that you break everything down into age groups, starting with your 20s, and things that each of us can do, the most important things to stay healthy and hopefully avoid cancer. Yes, and it makes such a difference looking at different ages, because in your, our 20s, we're not thinking of things that a 60 no, year old's gonna think about. you're not thinking a whole lot about this, probably, right. in general, but there are some key things that you should do in your 20s. One of them is staying out of mischief and yes. <laughs> just taking some precautions. And safe sex is probably the number one. Um, we don't think of infection as causing cancer, 
it's just kind of not an intuitive thing for us, but 10% right. of cancers in the United States are caused by infections. And most of those infections, HPV, HIV, hepatitis B and C, are sexually transmitted. So in the 20s, probably one of the peak things you can do is stay out of mischief, practice safe sex. Okay, that's, that's good advice right there. The other one, of course, in your 20s that you might do left over from your college days, eating fast food. And eating fast food. And if there's one thing in your 20s you can do beyond the practicing safe sex, yeah. try to find some alternative to fast food. Um, start to cook on your own, do something. People that eat fast food two or more times a week are twice as likely to become obese. And obesity is responsible directly for 20% of cancers in women. Um, wow. It surpassed smoking as the leading cause of preventable cancer in Minnesota right now. Very, very, very high. Um, people who eat at fast food establishments twice a week are also twice as likely to develop diabetes. Mm -hmm. And diabetes on its own is a cause of cancer. So in general, it's just a good idea it's to a good do idea. that as well. So yes. in our 30s, setting healthy eating habits, of course. Hopefully you've started to do that in your yes. 20s, but you, you continue that in your 30s. And continue that. And that's a real fun time where if you can find some passion, um, and, you know, we talk about eating healthy and we hear it all the time, but if you can find something, if there's some ethnic food that you like to prepare, something where you're going out to somebody's house and this is what you're really known for, getting excited about something. Is it a Mediterranean type of thing? Is it appetizers that are healthy that you're um, good? But develop a passion in some way. You're also telling us that in the 30s to ask questions and be your own health advocate? Be your own health advocate. And that is so important. We tend to trust our doctors and I'm right. one. And I'm standing here as a physician saying, don't always trust everything you right. hear. You have to be your own advocate and ask questions. Right now, um, children that are living in Minnesota today, 2% of them are supposed to develop cancer in their lifetime just due to radiation, medical wow. radiation growing up. That's x-rays and CT scans. Um, some of those are totally necessary. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. Um, but ask questions. Um, if you're taking your child in in your 30s for a study, ask, is this approved for children? Um, a children's hospital is probably a better place to go where they right. have radiologists, but, but really, really make ask sure questions. that it's needed. And some medications out there actually have carc carcinogens in them right. and are classified and ask, is that really the best choice? Are there alternatives? Wow, okay, 40s, practice stress management techniques. Stress management is so important. And, and this has been a fun year because we're seeing studies out of Sweden with breast cancer, cervical cancer, with almost a doubling in rates in people who are more stressed. And the interesting thing is it's not the objective stress. It's mm -hmm. not the job changes and relationship changes. It's how we perceive stress, the stress we feel. Um, so what we need to do is take some accountability for that stress. Do you want to do yoga? Do you want to pray? Do you want to get out and take a run? Something to deal with the stress in your life um, and develop those habits that you can carry with you. Yeah, so it's how we feel about no matter how much stress you have, it's how you handle it. Right, and we talked about this once. What I catch myself feeling really, really stressed sometimes, I'll make a list of 10, where the first thing I write is, we didn't run out of toilet paper today. Usually I'm laughing so hard, but right. it's like right. anything you can do to eliminate stress. Yeah, the humor helps. It does. And healthy relationships. This is the time to really pay attention to that. It is. And we look at the 20s and safe sex and all of these cancers that are caused by sex. When you're in a monogamous, healthy relationship, a healthy sex life in both men and women lowers the risk of breast cancer, and men do get breast cancer, um, and it also appears to lower the risk of prostate cancer in men. So healthy relationships are very, very important. Okay, well we don't want to leave out the 50s and 60s. <laughs> 50s, get screened for colon cancer and don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Get screened for colon cancer. Um, we're seeing a decline in mortality rates with cancer in, from cancer in the United States. And one of that is probably screening for colon cancer. Okay. You can catch it early and get rid of it. The other is don't get discouraged. In the 50s, often we're seeing friends developing cancer. Um, and you start to think, they're doing everything right. What, you know, does it make any difference? And it does. The right. National Cancer Institute says we can probably prevent at least two thirds of cancers. So don't get discouraged. So just have a good attitude. You see some people doing everything right and develop cancer. Okay, so 60s and beyond. Stay active, have a passion, and get outside every day. Get outside every day. And we're hearing more and more and more about vitamin D in the role. We are. And in the 60s, sometimes we're seeing people who have had cancer. And it's interesting, here we are in the north. Cancer mortality rates are higher in the north than the south. Probably some of that is vitamin D. We're also seeing that lack of vitamin D, lack of sun exposure, is probably an independent risk factor for death. Period. Okay. Um, heart disease, cancer. So if you can get outside for 15 minutes, plus that little bit of exercise, gardening 15 minutes twice a week can lower your risk of lung passion. cancer. Find yeah. something that's a passion that you do 
you know, as much as you can. Well, we so appreciate all of these tips for all of us at any age. It's really important. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming in. We Thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Well, you can find Dr. Lynn Eldridge's book, Avoiding Cancer One Day at a Time. Much more information in there in book. Thanks, Heidi. After the break, the lovely Paris Bennett, a special performance from the American Idol contestant when we return.